Okay, so then let's start. Um, yeah, today I want to uh, show you actually the outcome of uh, my last Hackweek project. Um, it is uh, still in a state where uh, you can improve something. For example, it's, uh, as you will uh, later see, it doesn't have maybe a tab completion or something like that. I think I have some feedback. Don't, don't. I just hope that it works. Um, and uh, anyway, so uh, the current state before that uh, tool um, was written of RPM key management was, um, as far as I know, not the best. There is some pull request open for Zipper. I think it hasn't been touched for a year or something about adding a Zipper key management. And so I thought, uh, let's just uh, do something quick that will uh, give results and that will enable the user to see what keys are on the system in an easy way and to um, yeah, manage that keys. Uh, so first, what are our RPM keys actually? Essentially just GPG keys. Um, they are used to sign report metadata. Um, as well as uh, the actual RPM packages. And if you're lucky, the same key is used to sign the metadata and the package because uh, especially for third-party repos, you get really interesting constellations. Um, yeah, They are at least what the front end is um, about stored in the RPM database like RPMs. So the actual management is done via the RPM command, which is not really documented anywhere. It was not easy to find out all of that. There is like one Stack Overflow uh, article that tells you, yeah, you need to run this command because essentially um, all the RPMs are called GPG pub key. All the RPM keys are called GPG pub key in the RPM database. And uh, the version number you can see here, um, do I have a cursor here? The version number you can see here are the last digits of the fingerprint of that key. So we have multiple packages installed with uh, the same name, but different version numbers, which usually, as far as I know, doesn't work, but here it does. Uh, RPM displays us uh, then, yeah, some GPG key that is somehow mangled into the view of an RPM. So you see the packager is actually the uh, equivalent of a common name of a GPG key, and the description is the PEM of the actual key. So um, yeah, but at least we get it. We query some package name and we get a key. So um, here you can see it's uh, just some GPG key. In this case, it's the Google uh, Chrome assigning key for the Google Chrome repo. And you see they are using an ancient DSA 1024-bit uh, key, and they even have a sub-key for encryption for whatever reason, which is Elgamal. Um, so when you add a repo, then you are usually asked, uh, yeah, do you want to accept this key, whatever, this is the fingerprint. Uh, here, this was correspond to the, the last digits of the fingerprint would correspond here to the last digits of the version number of the package. This here is not the version number, that's the release number or whatever. I'm not sure what it actually is uh, used for, but um, yeah, there we have some other bytes, I don't know. Uh, then you import it, and then you forget about it. Maybe you remove the repo, and the key is still there, and maybe you don't actually want that. Uh, so it's uh, maybe not a good idea to leave, leave this key list uh, unattended, if you care about security, at least. Um, when you sign a package, you can actually see which key was used to sign it. So. Um, here we query the GStreamer uh, 1.20 plugin open H264 package, which is from our special codex repository, which, which contains packages that we do not distribute actually. But for that topic, there's another talk uh, tomorrow called Multimedia Madness that I'm curious about. Um, so this uh, key here that is marked, um, yeah. 
that is red marked uh, here uh, it ends with the same digits as we have here, so we know this key is signed and RPM also knows uh, by doing hopefully a bit uh, uh, more in-depth check. So um, we uh, have a signed package and we have a signed repo metadata. So in the past you could do what RPM, uh, the super keys plugin do, does with these commands. These are very easy to read, easy to find about, uh, as you see. And uh, the only easy thing here is how to actually remove a key. You just remove the package. Interestingly, this works with the RPM command, but if you try to remove that package with zipper, it doesn't work. So uh, I guess RPM just reuses the front end but doesn't expose it into the actual RPM database that zipper reads. Anyway. Um, importing a key is also not that hard. You run rpm minus minus import, uh, which works for an URL, a local file, and I think even from standard in. So, but when you install that plugin, everything goes nicer. So it's demo time, I would say. So when you do super keys lists, we get a list of all the keys that are currently on the local system. Um, yeah, you see even when the key was added, I hope that this field is accurate, at least this is what I interpreted into this field. If I'm wrong, maybe uh, someone can uh, open an issue. And then, let's see, and then I added another interesting subcommand because um, maybe we should look first at how the repos actually can look like, but maybe not always don't. So, um, in an ideal world, a repo file might look like this and have this GPG key entry, which is nice because we know which GPG key then corresponds to that repo. That doesn't mean that this repo doesn't have more GPG keys. And on, as I said, third party repos, third party vendors tend to do strange things like installing GPG keys in the post install script of an RPM or something like that. But um, in an idea word, we can note the GPG key here which is nice because then we actually have some uh, something to tie the GPG keys to the repo. Um, this is what uh, super repo keys makes use of, uh, super keys, repo keys, which takes some time now in the background because what it does is it downloads all that um, URLs in the repo files and then it uh, can show you the subset of the repos that actually have this GPG key entry and which GPG key they are using. This is uh, very nice because it also enables you to find out if a GPG key is still used in theory because it could be that it is in a repo used that doesn't have this GPG key entry in the .repo file. Um, the nice thing is now let's for example use that Slack key and remove it. So, now, let's first have to look on my own. Um, now I run repo keys with a minus A argument, which is um, adding back the key. So, um, when I'm uh, going through all that list of repos, super keys can automatically detect, oh, yeah, I have a repo file with a GPG key um, referenced, but it's not actually added on the system. So um, I can simply yeah, re-import that key. Um, yeah, that is a uh, that is also a nice uh, a nice way that yeah makes the management a bit easier. The tool is. Uh, yeah, I guess the show and add and remove are self-explanatory. I still 
just show one key, maybe with the open H264 signing key. You can add minus P, then it will include the PEM at the uh, description field. And um, yeah, essentially just a small Python tool that um, enables you to manage the super keys. Um, yeah, as far as that's concerned, I'm done with talking. Maybe you have some questions. Also, on that uh, QR code, I think you will find the Hackweek project, and on that one, you will find the URL to the GitHub repo. Um, obviously, it was uh, too hard for me to link the GitHub repo directly from the presentation because I forgot it. And um, so, if you have any uh, ideas for improvements, then feel free to open a pull request. And now I'm open for questions. Um, I don't know if you heard it uh, recently. There was a news that uh, PyE PL uh, project uh, fully disabled support for PGP uh, signing of packages uh, because they did a verification and they realized that they cannot trust all the keys which currently uh, have signed their packages uh, because uh, half of them was just self signed. Uh, half of them come from some servers which they cannot actually trust. Uh, what what do you think about this regard in like in keys which we have? If someone did such research and do we have some policies? Which because yeah, it's good that repo is signed with the key, but does someone uh, have some requirements to what this key is and how trustable the key itself? Good question. So first, that repo you were talking about is a third-party repo? PyPy. Uh, Py Py. It's ah. in, uh, PGP. PyPy switch PGP, like whole project, they just currently disable verification if package is signed by PGP or not because they simply don't trust this mechanism anymore. Because I'm not sure if that is, is really comparable to our situation. I mean, here GPG is important, for example, um, so that we don't have to really trust our mirrors in a way that uh, we would uh, have to trust them without GPG keys. Because yeah, this way we can be sure that our mirrors cannot inject malicious content, for example. So I think it still makes sense in our case, but I'm not sure if that is comparable. Okay, thank you. I think the main difference between RPM using GPG keys and PyPy is we are already using GPG signatures on packages and on metadata by default for years and years. And that's actually the standard. I think that's completely different for PyPy. It was optional and not really used that much. So they decided it's no longer worth the effort because the keys are bogus anyway. And that's completely different to what we have. Yeah, so we have basically two mechanics. Um, if I remember correctly, the key files, when you download them from download OpenSUSE org, they are not redirected, so they come at least from our main server, which we maybe trust a bit more. I mean, of course, there's, uh, you need also to trust SSL at that point. Um, but they are the build service keys are also, I mean, from all the projects, they are also signed with the build service master key, which is also not very secure anymore. It's also in DSA at the moment. We want to change this. But it would be nice, actually, if, you, if your plugin could verify this. So if you list uh, the build service keys there, that they are actually um, signed by the build service key. That would be really a nice addition, I think, to your plugin. Yeah, it would be nice if you could, uh, maybe we can talk later or yeah. something, uh, because I actually don't know where to find that key. <laughs> yeah, any more questions? Last question. Um, how did you test it and what maybe did you not cover yet in testing? So, as, as I said, it's a Hegwick project. It's currently in a state where it works. It's um, not having any kind of test suit, uh, as you would regard yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it could be manual test case. Yeah, uh, so I manually tested it on 
my system and uh, yeah, it is currently a first working state and um, it can have, uh, it can use some improvement like an automated test suite and uh, another idea would be, yeah, as I already told, there are some features I would like to see in this uh, tool that are not yet implemented. Could you think of somehow badly configured repositories which would horribly break your code? Um, I'm not sure, but I think we need to talk about this maybe later because I think um, we are running out of time now and uh, so we need to make space for the next talk. Yeah, that's, thanks for listening.